What's up guys, my name is Trevor and uh, today I'm going to be talking about the legal loophole which is the land border crossing for Canadians to return to Canada. If you don't know much about me, haven't seen any of my other videos, I live my life over the last four years, uh, most of the time as a digital nomad. So I live in different countries, travel around quite a bit. And even when I'm back in my own home country, which is Canada, I find that I'm always switching cities and bouncing around. So I have a hard time sitting still. When these new quarantine rules came into effect for Canada, which I believe was February 22nd, uh, I'd already been in Honolulu for the last five to six months. And when I found out, it was going to be about maybe three weeks after this came into effect that... I was coming back to Canada to visit. So uh, I didn't leave knowing that these rules were going to be in place. And uh, at first, I was willing to fully go along with them. There's a 1 800 number that I called and I called and I called. I actually got up at three in the morning a few times trying to, you know, jump the gun and be one of the first people to call in to book one of these quarantine hotels. And it, it ended up turning into maybe. 18 hours or more of being on hold. Then after three hours, the line would cut out and I'd be back starting again. So instead of enjoying my time in uh, Hawaii, I it would just I found like the last week was just stressful. After I gave up on that, I contacted the embassy, the Canadian embassy, when I was in Honolulu, and they recommended that I just go back through the land border crossing. So I'd heard about that, but I wasn't sure how legal this was or, you know, if it was allowed. So I ended up doing searches on YouTube and um, trying to find articles on it just to give me some confirmation I could actually do this. And I didn't find anything. So even though maybe this isn't the kind of content I would make all the time, I wanted to do this video to help those of you who are not in Canada and have to come back and can't afford to spend over $2,000 on a hotel and just generally don't want to go through that miserable process. This isn't to do a video on anything. I'm not trying to do anything political here or talk about anything to do with CV-19. This is just 100% about how you can legally return to Canada through the land border crossing, what to expect, and how you can save a bunch of money and then go home and do your 14 days. So the first thing you're going to need is you need to get a CV-19 test and you can get that in most places. I booked mine. I think it was within, I think it was for, within 48 hours, like two days before hand, because you want to be able to make sure you get it before your flight so you can get on the flight. And then you want enough time between then and when you get to the border. So you're still under 72 hours since you've been tested. So those are the rules. Um, so you just need to do the math and book a test um, before you leave wherever you're at right now. So with this legal loophole, I think there's something like 119 border crossings. They're not all open 24-7. So you Depending on flights and stuff like that, you probably want one that is going to be open 24-7. So pick the closest border crossing that is open all the time uh, to where you're trying to go. And you want to book a flight into the U.S. And you want to land basically as close to the border as possible. So from there, you can get out, get a taxi or arrange some kind of shuttle or something like that. It's, it's really simple. And just they will drive you right to the turnaround to where the border is. And you can get off on foot with your bags. And it might be a little bit colder than where you were, but um, it's not a big deal. Uh, when you get out, pretty much at all border crossings, there is the lanes for cars. And then there will be a doorway, which is for you know people on foot. So you're going to come up. And when they call your name, you go through. They're going to look up your passport and you're going to have to make sure you filled out that Arrive Can app. This uh, app will allow them to pull up all your data. They'll probably ask where you're quarantining and they're going to ask uh, for your results for that test that you took um, and make sure it's still within 72 hours. And from there, most likely, depending on the border crossing, they're going to ask you to do another test. 
and they will, depending on the border crossing, they might have people at the border there. They won't do the test. They will ask you to download an app from Switch Health. They will sit on the other end of a table, six feet away from you, instruct you with what you need to do. That's about it. So I feel like a lot of people are in a position where, like myself, they do a lot of traveling and they've been gone a while. They're not trying to just sneak away for a week to Mexico or anything like that. They've just happened to be out of the country before the new rules. Or I hear about a lot of situations where people just have to travel. There's some sort of emergency or maybe a family member is affected in another country and you need to go see them. And this can save you a lot of money, like upwards of $2,000 and also a lot of stress. Don't be intimidated by crossing at the land border and flying to a U.S. city that's close to the border and doing it. It's so easy and so simple. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of money and in the long run, a lot of stress. I hope this is helpful. I did take some video when I was in Honolulu and then flying back into Bellingham. And then also some, some video of me walking across the Peace Arch or the Douglas border crossing, which is where I crossed back into Vancouver. Uh, the video footage, of course, is purely just for fun. I decided to document it. Uh, I had a late flight and I do not sleep on red eye flights. So I've been awake for like 30, 40 hours. So I was pretty loopy, but it was still uh, a very smooth process. So um, enjoy these video clips. All right. So last day in Honolulu and I'm just documenting my travels back because it's a hot topic right now. And I will not be flying into Canada. I will be heading to the Peace Arch border crossing. So I'll fly into Seattle and Bellingham. And I'll be crossing that way to avoid the hotel quarantine and paying up to $2,000. All right, so we just landed in uh, Bellingham. It's hard as shit. It's cold. It doesn't feel anything like Hawaii felt like. And uh, I got a couple hours to kill because I'm getting someone to meet me at the Peace Arch border. So I'm going to take a taxi into town and uh, maybe get a little drunk. I don't know. No, I'm in, uh, <laughs> I'm in Blaine. It's cold as f So it's just like an extremely small town. Basically that only people come to to cross the border. And the border is like behind that bridge. Well, I'm heading back to Canada. I didn't want to pay two grand for a hotel. So I'm currently freezing my ass off, crossing the border, the Peace Arch. And we'll see how this goes. Well, it took me about an hour and 10 minutes to cross. And uh, they treat me like shit. But uh, I didn't pay two grand. <laughs> If this has been helpful, um, give me a like and a subscribe. If you have any comments, drop them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much, guys. Peace.